Hey, Joe Zach here. Uh, hello, Internet. I wanted to show you Canines, which is one of my favorite things in the world. And Canines is an open source command line interface for interacting with Kubernetes. And if you're yelling at your monitor or phone right now because there's already a perfectly fine Kubernetes uh, command line interface uh, with kubectl, then, uh, well, uh, stick around because I'm going to show you why I think this tool is worth mentioning. Uh, several million times on the podcast and uh, anywhere else that gives me a shot. So um, first things first, we are looking at canines. We're looking at pods for our Minikube context, which is a Minikube cluster. Uh, this is my user. And we've got some version numbers here. Uh, next up here, we've got a list of frequently used, most frequently used namespaces. So you can see, uh, I can look at all namespaces, which is all of them combined, which is not so great if you have, you know, thousands of pods. Uh, we've got uh, Tecton Pipelines, which is another namespace, and the default, default, of course, which is what we're looking at now. We don't see anything exciting here. So um, before I talk about this stuff, which is, you know, hopefully pretty fairly explanatory, but um, hopefully it'll make it a little bit easier if we can actually have some examples. So I'm going to hit the number one in order to flop to this namespace. Um, so there we go. So it was instant because it's pulling in the background. I don't have a lot of pods here, so you don't really notice just how much quicker it is to have that stuff always loaded. But I'm going to hit two to go back to default. One to pipelines, uh, default pipelines. Let's try zero. Yeah. So uh, you can see just right there, it's really fast to uh, change namespaces. And if you're doing that with kubectl, you know that's uh, a bit of a pain right there. So that's enough reason for me to uh, keep going with it. Now, uh, so we are viewing some pods here. I want to talk about this section of the screen, which are uh, context-sensitive commands. So I can do things like attach to a pod, or delete a pod, or describe a pod, or edit, um, control K, kill it. So um, let's just for fun, I'm going to go in here and view logs. So I just arrow down, I'm hitting L. I don't see anything. That's because I'm, I've defaulted to tailing. So what I'm going to do here is look at my context uh, sensitive commands and I'm going to hit zero for all. And hopefully this isn't uh, getting intimidating because you really get the flow uh, really quite quickly after you've used it for like say an hour or so. This stuff starts to feel natural because it's all really consistent. Uh, so I've hit the, uh, the all command. We can see that we've got some stuff with this timestamp uh, in these logs. It's not very human readable. So I'm going to go ahead and hit T to have canines add uh, a convenient timestamp for me. So uh, one other thing I want to show you on the screen, that's pretty convenient, is I can search with the slash character. And you'll notice that this is not shown in these context-sensitive actions. And that's because you can search on every pane, as far as I know. Uh, could be wrong about that, but I, I don't think so. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type slash, and it's going to give me this little prompt and I'm going to start typing uh, one of these messages, starting Q. Okay, so you can see it's already filtered as I typed. And uh, you can see the search uh, that it's currently showing me. And uh, I, can, of course, can keep typing up here. Hit enter, and there we are. So uh, that's pretty cool. I hit escape to exit, which I think is pretty self-explanatory, um, or pretty common, I'll say. But uh, the slash is the first thing I wanted to show you. And so that works on every screen. So if I want to, for example, search for uh, pipelines on this screen without having to scroll through a bunch of stuff, and there we go. Uh, you can also do stuff like uh, searching for running, which is everything not very exciting. Let's say search for IP might be a little bit more interesting. Uh, 17.0.8 or 9. Uh, there you go. So that's pretty useful. You can see it, it actually searches stuff. Uh, it actually searches more than just what's shown as well, which is really nice. So you can actually um, search by label, actually figure out what that syntax looks like now. Uh, but you can do all sorts of cool stuff, um, regular expressions, things like that, which is really convenient if you imagine that we're looking at thousands of pods here. That's where it really shines. Uh, in here, I'm just using kind of a trivial example, but uh, it's still pretty cool. Uh, so the second thing that you just have to remember first with slash for filtering is colon colon lets you switch to different panes or resource types so here we're viewing pods 
but I could also go view all the namespaces. You can see we, the, the context uh, sensitive commands have changed and I can you know, describe or uh, I don't have any quotas, this is not very exciting. Um, get the YAML output. Uh, let's go take a look at our context, that's pretty cool. So there's all the context I can switch up uh, that's coming from my cube config file. Um, we can go look at deployments, for example. Do we have any stateful sets? Uh, yeah, we do have one. Services. Okay, so uh, that's all pretty cool. And this is all pulling in the background, which is why this is so quick, uh, which is really nice. And so uh, if you remember, the first thing was fil uh, filtering with slash. There we go. And there we go. That was not a very exciting filter. Hold on. This is much more exciting. We'll search for Tecton, which is a pretty cool CI, CD thing I was kind of messing with. Uh, so that's all pretty cool. And uh, you can see uh, at all times the namespace, context, cluster, and uh, some other various information is used. The third thing I want you to remember is a list of all the different things you can go view with that colon command. So if you do control A, probably command A, if you're one of those Mac rebels, it's going to show you everything. So if you want to go uh, look up or do some benchmarking, there's some sort of benchmarking tool built in. I don't know if that's custom resource or if that's Kubernetes thing. I don't know. Maybe I'll check it out one of these days. Uh, cron jobs, I probably don't have any here, but that's another cool one. Uh, there's a couple other things that are actually built in and just kind of neat, like Popeye. Uh, I'd never heard of that before. So uh, let's go check it out, shall we? So if I, uh, I had just drilled in that time I hit enter. I also could have done colon, colon, and Popeye and got to the same screen. And Popeye is basically, a, it's kind of like a linter that uh, will go through and scour your uh, your cluster and give you information on it. And so we can kind of come in here and, um, you know, kind of drill in with enter, which is pretty cool. So you can see that this is in fact a command line interface, but uh, it's surprisingly usable uh, and, you know, laid out really well. It doesn't feel like just a wall of text here. So uh, just to kind of reiterate for like the 40 million time, uh, you can filter with slash, you can change resources or panes with colon. And the third thing was control A or command A in order to see your resources. Now the last thing, let me go back to like the pods page, is question mark, shift question mark. And you can see all the different commands you can do. So there's things on here that aren't shown on the context sensitive uh, command panel just because there's too many of them. So you see there's things like I, I mentioned escape button. That's something you do on every page. Um, you know, you can clear a field, you can copy and paste, um, you can force a reload, you can save the output to, to a file. That's really useful. Uh, also just sorting by things on this pane. So you can see that this is context specific. So if I can shift C and, uh, sh sort by CPU, let's give that a shot. Okay. That was not very exciting. Let's try to find something else that is very exciting. Maybe by... Like sorting by memory. All right, there we go. Look at that. Very exciting. <laughs> so that's just nice. And those are the kind of things that like, that would take a lot of work to keep doing that in kubectl. So uh, I just really like the speed. A um, couple of things I want to hit on real quick. I uh, mentioned Popeye. Um, yeah, I mean, that actually, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so... I encourage you to check it out because you can go around pretty quickly. You can change uh, contexts without actually changing your global context, which is really nice too. So for example, um, let me open up a second window here, K9s. And you can see uh, here I am uh, hooked up to Minikube. I can hit uh, zero to see all my namespaces again. Uh, I can also go to colon, uh, CTX or context. And I can change my context to uh, Linode. I don't think I have anything running right there, right there, right now. Yeah, so I don't have uh, anything, but there's some built-in stuff. So this is a, a different cluster, and we can come click over here and see that I'm still hooked up to uh, Minikube over here. So this gives me a nice way to compare. 
And neither of these change my global context. So if I was doing some sort of scripting or anything, this gives me a nice way to view things without changing up my local state, which is really important if you're like working somewhere and you just need to go take a quick peek somewhere else and you don't want to kind of stop what you're doing or uh, risk uh, doing the wrong thing. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. There's a lot more I could talk all day about little kind of hidden gems and things you can do on, on various pages like um, – I don't know. Port forwarding is really nice. If you do a lot of that, you know, that's something you get kind of <laughs> tired of typing, but I just hit shift F to do that here. You can run benchmarks, whatever that means. Uh, you can do all sorts of cool stuff. So I really like it. If you work with Kubernetes a lot, I hope that you can kind of see the value of having a tool like this that lets you hop around between contexts and clusters and namespaces so quickly and get to information. And uh, it's just a, a really nice way of doing I honestly say like 95% of the stuff that you do with kubectl. The only things you can't really do are batch operations, like deleting a whole bunch of pods or uh, scripting. So, um, yeah, there, there's other things that are nice about it. You know, leave me a comment if you have any questions or anything, and uh, I can tell you more about it. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. So hope you enjoy that if you're into Kubernetes. And uh, smash that like button.